Hello friends, I'm here with the Creality Ender 3 S1 Plus. This is the big brother of the Creality Ender 3 Max or the Ender 3 Max Neo. So there's the Ender 3 Max, the Ender 3 Max Neo, and the Ender 3 S1 Plus. Now I don't know why they didn't go ahead and use the word Max with the S1 lineup, they went with Plus instead. But this is the large version of the S1 which would make it the equivalent of an S1 Max. The real big difference between the S1 and the Endo 3 Max or Endo 3 Max Neo is that it comes with all their high-end equipment with the star of the show being the new Creality Sprite Direct Drive Extruder. So let's open this sucker up, put it together. I've placed a small table to the side of this table so as I open it, I can put my components on that table and you should do something similar. First thing we got is this big giant piece of foam tossed to the side. After that, we have some stickers and a manual and a scraper. A sample of filament. And a bag full of goodies. Next up is a cable clip, a runout sensor attached to the filament holding arm, and here is the second section of the filament arm. Next up we have the screen mount, and in here, be very careful, is the new beautiful direct drive sprite extruder. You'll notice it has the CR touch pre-mounted on the side. Fantastic, good times for Creality owners. Put this aside gently and behind door number two we have the Creality touchscreen. Now when picking up pieces of foam Make sure they're not molded underneath any components so that you don't rip components out and drop them on the floor. So just real gently check, make sure nothing else moves. You can pick that first piece up and get it aside. There you go. Underneath you're going to see the big gigantic bed of the Creality S1 Plus. But first we have to take out the Z gantry which is attached to this entire mechanism right here with both stepper motors. Again, we're just going to gently slip it up from the foam. It might be stiff and put it aside. Don't be shy. Some of these components are really tight. You just have to work them out carefully. They are tight so they don't shift around in shipping, especially because they're coming in from China. Look inside. You're going to find more pieces of foam. You're going to gently work them out because they are snugly in place. Toss them aside. Here's another one right here. Just gently work that out. Toss it aside. And here you have it, the complete base of the S1 Plus with the bed attached. Now again, the stepper motors are disabled, so the bed will move. We're gonna be really careful as we work this printer out of the box and place it on the table next to us. There should be no further components blocking the printer from coming out of the foam. But please be very careful, just in case there are. I'm gonna grab it from the bar in the front, and then below the rear stepper motor, and I'm just going to work it up gently like this, trying to avoid letting the bed slide forward and backward, and place it on my table. In case you are really new to this, this is the front of the printer. So we're going to place this forward, push it aside, put our components here, and we're going to get started on building this sucker. Now keep in mind, Creality advertises and brags about the fact that it only takes a few steps to put this printer together. I believe they say six. Some of those steps have multiple parts. But generally speaking, building these printers has become much easier as they come mostly pre-assembled. So let's get started and see how quickly this comes together. Sprite extruder, screen mount, screen, Filament holder, 
filament holder and filament runout spool, cable clip, spatula, sample filament, manual, another beloved pair of clippers, a bag with a Z-stop and a cable, which you will not be using, memory card and a card reader. This is very important. Don't lose it. Many screws, some cheap junk tools, one replacement nozzle, a really cheap nozzle cleaning tool, and the nicest tool I've ever seen come included with a Crowley printer, this little wrench. Let's check out the manual. The first thing you're going to notice is it comes with a handy cheat sheet. This talks about settings for what you're printing with and how to set your retractions and temperatures with the Sprite Direct Drive Extruder. On the back, there are some leveling tips. I am going to make a video to show you exactly how to level this bed. You can watch that when you're done watching this build. Typically, the printer comes with a very small, very poorly printed manual. You can tell that they're going for the premium experience with the S1 line, specifically the S1 Plus, because as a full color, large quality printed manual in multiple languages. And we're gonna use this to get building. The first thing it wants us to do is install the Sprite extruder and a cable clip. To do that, you're gonna need your little arc here and your Z gantry. And we're gonna lay it down. Your Sprite extruder mounts right here, and you'll notice there are two tabs on it. On the back of your Sprite extruder, you'll see two matching tabs. You are gonna take this extruder like this, logo side up, and you are gonna place it gently until it slides in to those two notches. You should feel it fit fairly firmly in there. Then the manual says we will lock it in with four M3X6 screws. They will come in a bag like this and they will say M3X6 right on the bag. The screws look like this. You're gonna install them with this tool right here that came with your machine. It still be slides into the back end right there to screw them in. Okay, those four screws go right here. Please don't abuse them. Please be gentle. Put them in loosely. Once all four are in, we can take our tool and just snug them up a little bit. We want them snug, but not overly tight. We don't want to strip or warp or break anything. All right, so the instructions want you to put this cable clip on next. To do that, you can simply stand this up and to look to the side with the knob. We'll be installing this on the other side. To install it, we're simply gonna take it face up like this and place it over this flat part right here, pushing it in, and that's it. Step two, according to our lovely manual, is to install the gantry frame using four M5 by 45 screws. They come in a bag that's labeled and they look like this. Again, you're gonna find the tool that Creality gave you. Make sure it fits the screw and you're good to go. All right, so we are going to pick up the gantry frame. Face it forward and slide it into the notches on the side of the machine. All right, so take two of these and slide them into the hole. To get it to enter the frame, you might have to lift up just a touch and you will feel when it slips into the hole on the frame. Give it a couple of turns and it will stay put. Then the next one will slide in and it should probably already fit right into the frame hole because the top one is holding the frame in place. Give it a couple of turns and move on to the one on the other side. Turn them until they start to make contact and then move on to the next. Once all four make decent contact, go ahead and snug them up a little more. 
Again, don't crank on them. Just make them snug. You don't want to warp anything or strip anything. Once they're snug, you should feel your gantry frame is firm and we're ready to move on. Next on our list is to install the touchscreen. You're going to use M418s in a little bag like this and it's labeled just like all the rest. And the screw looks like this. So here's where the screen mount goes. First thing you're gonna do is make sure your screen cable isn't trapped underneath your printer. Just move it aside like that. And you're gonna find the screen mount. It looks like this, it has three holes right there. Those three holes are gonna line up with these three holes. So this goes right here. Because the screws are underneath, it can be tricky. What I suggest you do is grab this tool and push this screw onto the tool. Take it and feed it into the first hole on the mount. So we're like this. And then just guide it in to the hole and give it a couple of twists. We are then going to repeat that trick for the remaining two screws. Once all three screws are in, we'll just snug them up. Once all three screws are in, it'll look like that. Next up is to physically install the touchscreen right there. Flip your touchscreen over and you'll notice these two pegs and this cable connection. You are going to take this cable, flip it around the back and plug it into your screen. It only fits one way, so be careful and fit it in the correct way. Then take your screen, turn it over, rest it into the holes, and push it down. Your screen is now installed. Ooh, very fancy. Okay, next up is the filament detector and the filament spool holder. The first thing you're going to want to do is take the two pieces and install them on the proper side. You are going to look for the filament runout sensor and you're going to install the spool holder on that side. Simply push it in and twist it. It will lock into place. To install it, simply position it like this. Move the filament runout sensor towards the front out of the way. Place this leading hook in front of the gantry and then slide it down. Place the runout sensor and you're done. Now that it's installed, take your filament runout sensor and turn it so the input is on the correct side. Take the matching white cable and simply plug it in. Again, it only fits one way. There are little notches. Be gentle. Make sure you put it in the correct way. Okay, you've made it to the home stretch. So now we are going to connect the wiring. I'll give you a close look at how to do this because it can look confusing and overwhelming at first, but in reality, it's very simple. Let's do it. To get started, we've turned the printer around. Most of this wiring is done from the back and some of it's hidden in plain sight. For example, you might notice a piece of blue tape right here on the side of this gantry frame. That tape is hiding the filament runout sensor. Simply peel it off and reveal the filament runout sensor. Bring the wire down towards the back of the machine. Okay, now that you've got your cables, why don't you take your eyes and bring them down to the bottom here. You're gonna see this little rubber tab right here. Just grab it and pop it off. That's gonna reveal three plugs. And you'll notice two of them fit these cables. They only fit in one plug, so find the plug that matches the size and plug it in. Two. This plug in the middle is for accessories such as a light bar. You'll leave that one empty. Let's back up and have a look at the other side. Take your bed and push it forward, revealing another hidden cable. It's held to the base by a piece of tape. Just peel that tape off and free that cable. That cable has a Z on it and it's for your Z axis motor. So it goes right here. 
Again, it's keyed and only fits one way. Gently pop it into place. Next, we're gonna bring our eyes up to this section right here. You remember the cable connection that we installed earlier? We're going to be using that now. But first, we're gonna grab the big giant wire that's hanging from the printer coming out the bottom and attach two small connections to the Z-stop switch and the stepper motor. They are just dangling out of the cable like this. Both of them only fit one connection. So find the connection that fits underneath the stepper motor and plug it in. The other one is super tricky. There is a hole right under here and that's where it goes. So take that cable, look closely underneath, match up the keyed slot, and just gently nudge it in. That is the cable for your Z-stop switch, which is right here. And it tells the printer when the hot end has gone as far left as possible. Now we just talked about this little hook right there. We're gonna grab this big giant wire we've been working with and you're gonna take note of this piece of paper right here. But not specifically this piece of paper, but the actual covering underneath it that's covering the cable because this piece of paper is a sticker and it might be off center a bit, which mine is. So take the black section under it, pick it up and slide it in just like that. Now that it's in place, we are gonna hook up our Sprite extruder. Turning the printer around, you're gonna see two sets of clips. One here, one here. Anybody who's worked on a computer and is familiar with RAM will be familiar with these clips right here. We are gonna open them up gently, pushing them aside. Now we're gonna take the extruder cable, look for the, the pin right here, and turn it around towards the back of the extruder. Line up the pins and push it down, a little bit on both sides, then in the center, until this clip closes by itself. You can just make sure it closes all the way. Now you'll take note of this protective sleeve and behind it, a pair of clips. This is flexible. So you can bend that down and just slide the protective sleeve into that section and you're done. The final step is to take your power cable, plug it into the three prong adapter in the back. It only fits one way and plug it into the wall. Assuming you've done everything correctly, you should be able to now turn it on. Now that it's on, to make sure we hooked up everything correctly, we are going to auto home it by touching ready and watching the printer auto home. You'll notice the probe will touch the bed telling the printer it's reached the bottom. Once the probe triggers, the hot end will home at approximately 10 millimeters. And that's it, you're done. You've successfully assembled your Ender 3 S1 Plus and you're ready to tram it, set your Z offset, run your auto bed leveling, and print your test print. I'm Greg Adventure, your instructor on 3D Rundown, and this Ender 3 S1 Plus Creality Printer Build was today's adventure.